Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. Is it me or does it feel like we're being spoiled for choice on topics to advocate on? There's so much going on this year. I'll be diagnosing a root cause of the casualties from a seasonal intruder, Lassa fever, no less. My diagnosis, a casual attitude. Bolahan takes a more empathic look at the casualties of domestic violence using Mariam Sanda account as a case study. Chuka is definitely on the side of the casualties of the habitual slum evictions he is appalled at what he terms a lazy act of wickedness. Libros presents a transparent assessment of the recent report by Transparency International and essentially says, wrestle with the message, don't shoot the messenger. Uche crowns this edition by speaking out on behalf of the casualties of human trafficking. She unveils the realities of a world that some of us may be encountering for the first time. It would seem that today is the day for speaking out for the casualties of injustice. What day isn't, I hear you say? Well, we're certainly equal to the task after the break. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the root of reoccurring, a reoccurring problem can often be traced to the attitude of those who are affected by it. A casual attitude leads to casualties, that's what I'm talking about. We're barely into the new year and it's clear to me that what this year's mantra ought to be is prevention is better than cure. We seem to be a nation of risk takers. We play Russian roulette with our lives, our resources, our time. We abdicate responsibility at the slightest opportunity. We blame government, we blame God, we blame our genes. Then along comes Lassa fever and exposes our casual unpreparedness for what it is. Yes, Lassa fever was first diagnosed in 1969 and recently it has been a yearly visitor. Some would say it has graduated from being a visitor to being a returning native. And yet, it doesn't fail to catch us unprepared, claiming 115 lives last year, and already, well, 40 at the last count this year, with 258 diagnosed cases. Should somebody not be made to answer for this casual tragedy, whether the Minister of Agric Agriculture or the Health Ministers, somebody? It doesn't help matters that we, the citizens, are very much at home with a culture of risk normalization. A media awareness campaign on Lassa fever discussed the possibility of contracting Lassa fever from roadside foods such as Akara and Suya, wrapped in newspapers, which may have rodents riding roughshod over them. Let's not be casual with our lives, please. Simple measures such as basic hygiene, wash your hands before eating, fumigate your environment, store dry food grains above ground level or even in airtight con containers, and be aware of the environment you obtain your food materials from. There's always something each of us can do, no matter how small. Remember, a casual attitude will inevitably lead to casualties. We can forward the message on WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, please no, forward it. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely <laughs> right, um, Ekene. I really do agree with you. We're very casual about these things. But I think the reason we're that casual is because it doesn't, Lassa fever doesn't really affect the rich. Oh, really? Doesn't really affect, yeah, because you're not, you know, from what I understand, it's often, am I right? Or am yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, um, you know, from what I understand, it's often in the poorer areas and all of that. Okay. So because Lassa fever doesn't affect the rich or, you know, the politicians or whatever, they're not going to bother themselves about it, you know, so they're just going to leave it. In fact, it's like population control in a sense. Wow. Yeah, in a sense, because, you know, let, let them, I mean, isn't that then, what they're doing with us? We oh, mm. it. When it comes, mm. there's always budget mm. opportunity for some person. For something, yeah. you, you know, so when you hear that countries are preventing malaria, 
mosquitoes. Even Rwanda recently, you know, are using drones to spray mosquito infested areas. Mm -hmm. And here we are. It's from 1960, 90 date, a yearly, like you have said, a yearly recurring pro uh, uh, problem. And yet we still cannot put our finger on it. It's okay. Rather than wait for it to reoccur, this is how we can eradicate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's quite unfortunate for me. Uh, but, like you have said, I like the parts, you know, where you educated the people. Mm. You know, mind what you eat, mm -hmm. where you're eating it from. And uh, with all of this, we can all, you know, be careful so as to avoid it, including those people at the grassroots. But government owes us the higher responsibility. No, no, they do. Reality, because they do. How much education can a can I do on, on a part? But the government has access and has the reach. Okay. And the, the, this is also a public health issue. Correct. It is. So the education, the awareness, all this need to come from the government. Mm. And it's when the people are well aware and they are prepared that they can actually prevent. Otherwise, with the kind of environment we still live in, in most part, especially the urban centers, um, mm. the vector has a place to breed. Mm. And this thing can keep repeating itself. Mm. Mm. And I mean, sorry, um, it's about dirty environments and uh -huh. everything, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So why is, you know, this, Not this is dirty really... environment, it's architecture. No. <laughs> it's architecture, so, <laughs> but, but yes, really, it's designs. Yeah, it because be... we have drainages, yeah. open yeah. drainages, yeah. Yeah. rats yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So, it's um, the, in the end, it's still it's still cleanliness. Yes. Because, uh, but it's just that homes should be homes should be designed in such a way that it makes people want to keep them clean. Mm. Yeah. I think that's basically what it is. Like mm. human behavior being um, influenced by how you know what environment you've been given mm -hmm. um, to you know. But um, I think the thing is, we were able to deal with Ebola, with Ebola yes. right? So why is Lassa fever? I don't know. I think we're so, so casual. Who, who can answer the question? Okay, the rich. <laughs> we're able to deal with it anyway, because yes. for Ebola, it, it, everybody spread, was at risk. Everybody but was you know at what risk. someone told me, um, one, a doctor who is doing awareness on it, he actually explained that the rats that yeah. go over the grains, where they dry the grains, yeah. is the same gary you buy mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the market. So it's not that you're, you in uh, wherever you live, I don't know, the high brow area, yeah, Banana so Island. You can still buy you, you, you you buy that make your own gary. It will still come to you. Because <laughs> no. I was thinking we don't have rats where I live, yeah, but, but yeah. the gary is coming to you. The difference is with less of people, you're meant to cook it. Yeah, but you know people drink gary. Yes, Okay, the rich don't drink gary. No, no, no. Even if you really drink, do. it's wow. quite, it's, it's <laughs> not as, you're not going to really find that many rich people soaking Gary with you. Like that. Inside and really going for it. It's students. <laughs> oh, <where> God. <laughs> students <laughs> in boarding, I don't know about schools, it's not and, funny. and so on. Yeah, That's where it's happening. Now. Yeah, exactly. Beans and, beans and Gary. Beans yeah, and yeah, 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 they go No, you know, I, they, they, you buy that you buy that one that they sell in small bags. Refine them. That's really terrible. But he also said that because it's, you know, you've limited it to rodents, it's actually easier to cut off. It shouldn't be, it's not complex. You know, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. that's, these are ways of drawing the attention of the politicians to the fact that don't sit down there and think it will get to you. Mm -hmm. You know, one way or the other, it will get to you yes. or somebody yeah. that you know. Yes. And, and truly, they should know that if you do not cop the menace now, it will get to you mm -hmm. one way or the other. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm glad the CIA part was mentioned. Yeah. Because that, that's Aha, where, yes. that's it's where it's a crossover. It's a crossover, yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, with the so, newspaper, in fact, right? I'm so like, glad. Like the yeah. bushmeat, you read Ebola. Luckily, I avoid bushmeat. But I like that because me personally, I mean, that's where they'll get me. Uh, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, see, yeah. I love it. And, and eating out, I mean, eating street food So you, what will you do? Someone said they'll take no, their I'm container. All of it. They won't take, oh, no. they will let them put it in the I'm avoiding all of it, just like my light Chinese food. I think the casual part of the, the casual casualization of mm. the event in itself shows a cultural problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because even in incidences of fire, which cuts across yes. and is prevalent, in the markets, you see trend... situations in which fire happens, an entire state capital will not have a functional oh. fire. Mm. Like Balogu, yes, you know, recently. You know, mm. I, I learned that even the firemen were, they, they did a bit of work yesterday. Mm. But it could mm. have also been otherwise. Mm. Right. Mm. So we tend to casualize almost everything. But even though we're not aware, we're not aware. Yeah. And I mean, the biggest we're problem not, I'm not, having with this whole thing is that Lassa fever, like you said, visits every single yeah. year. You know it's coming. And and we haven't even gotten on top of that. Yeah. Now we're expecting coronavirus to We're to, hoping to it come won't in. come near we're us. We're not ready. Because we know that. Yeah. If, if we have all kinds of fever. Lassa People even know when Lassa fever tends to come. Around this time, yeah, season, that's when it peaks because for whatever reason, it's more conducive for the rodent. So we even roughly know. eradicated malaria. Yeah, well, Ned Walker was saying how he wanted to. Get, spray the whole yeah, country. Spray the whole, and people were laughing at him, but yeah. I don't really At least think, he's thinking. Yeah, at least he's thinking. <laughs> mm. Well, 
taking responsibility for our role in preventing a problem that affects us all is a good first step to solving it. After the break, Bolaho draws our attention to the pathetic side of justice. Over to you, Bolaho. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. There is a human side to every story, even those with criminal plot lines, murders and mothers. When the judge pronounced the death sentence on Miriam Sander, my heart sank. Not because I thought justice was not served under our laws, but rather because of how events have robbed the only daughter of Miriam's marriage of her parents in a sad twist of parental history that will haunt her for a long time. It sounds more like an extract from the gods are not to blame. The mother shall kill the father, and she herself shall be hung from the neck until she dies. The only difference is that it is not a tale, but a life reality for the innocent product of an unfortunate marriage. So when asked of her father or mother, what would she say? When her peers talk in noble terms about their parents, what would be her own story? Does our social system have a way of nurturing this young girl out of the possible self-esteem and other psychological issues that will be her lot by virtue of the circumstances of her parents? A situation well beyond her control, but for which she will bear the full weight. Considering the recent spate of husband killing, a trend which appeared to be balancing of the hitherto more prevalent wife killing, there is an increased need for the society to pay more attention to a few things. Domestic abuse, and I dare say both sexes could be victims. And issues of mental health, some of which are nurtured by emotional abuses in relationships. The government and religious leaders have a great role to play in this, because when we lose the family, we lose the fundamental building block of what makes us human. It's a very, very sad tale, yeah. what, what's happened. Mm -hmm. um, but like you, it's not like I disagree with the, the judgment. Um, I do think that if you take a life, like premeditated, Murder, then yeah. it, you, know, you just have to deal with the consequences that come with that. But I do think it is sad because, you, like you mentioned, you brought the uh, human side to it, which was, what would this child say when other people are talking about their parents? Mm. How, how do we even have um, the social system that will help this child, you know, help their self-esteem and, and, you know, help them feel valued in any way? We don't. And, th and that's the tragic thing about this place. But in a sense, I feel like, you know, we have people like Helen Paul, who also came from a very tragic background. And I think there are many of us that, you know, for one reason or another, we've all come from tragic okay, backgrounds. Change that story, yeah, yeah. somehow. So you can change that story. I don't think it's too strange now to, you know, come across people who have something dodgy having happened yeah. to them, you know, whether it's rape or whatever the case may be. But yes, it's a very sad tale. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. family, once that's done away with, then you're just raising human beings with no anchor, for, no anything. For me, the only the side I want to look at it from is uh, for those of us who are alive. And then um, those, like you said, yes, seriously, just. <laughs> yes. And then um, those people who are going through that emotional, physical, psychological abuse, if you can't stay, walk away. Mm. And if you know you don't want her, instead of him or her, instead of allowing the abuse, 
he allow him or her to go because there are some marriages mm. you hear if I can't have you nobody will yes. Yes. You know? yes so it should be a lesson what will your children turn out to be mm -hmm. because if you do that thing that you are planning if you kill that woman or you kill that man the consequences the consequences also will be death for you mm -hmm. and you will leave you know some persons but even if you don't have children yeah. You are leaving parents behind. You are leaving brothers and sisters. Mm. What will be their lot? Oh, here is that guy whose brother killed somebody. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, You're going so, to have to live with that. Yeah, by the time you what? think it through, I think you will allow reason to prevail, to say, you know what? Mm. Let me walk away. And I think, you know, in our society, we need to open up more to have, when you say something, to have yeah. more people who you can go to in right. times of trouble. That's I know people typically think the church, but you'd be surprised how few people will go to their pastors or whatever mm -hmm. and have I that genuine heart to heart and yeah. bear all. Like I know two people, I can mention them here for the sake of those who may want to help, need that help, Bimbo Affairs. She specializes in counseling and also um, uh, praying Hannah Ministries. So these are people who dedicate their time to counseling people on the, on the verge. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we need to have more of these people like an AA service where people know, look, you need help, don't be ashamed to go for help because it's always better pre prevention. That's, again, prevention my own, is, is, you know, seek, is, is and instead opinion, of making it seem like a bad thing that like you left your husband's home, it's better yeah. to leave your husband's yeah. home. He's that alive, you're alive than, you know. Okay, yeah, I was going to say something similar, but what it is that I, I look at it from a more professional point of view. What it is is that we need to get people to see therapists. Yeah. Um, and we need to let, the, let people know who therapists are. They, I think a lot of people don't actually understand what yeah, that was. We're pastor. not used to yes. therapists. It's, uh, it's therapists we need. Mm. And, uh, and then um, we need... Uh, I think, the, the I think these, these the women are therapists. More, the world is more open now. No, professional ones, actually, rather than those that seem to think okay, they have the talent yeah. for it, yes. Um, but you, I, mean, you I think they, may have, they have you, certificates. You, you, you I, can, I can't... Oh, okay. Vouch. No, some don't. I'm, no, I'm there just, are some people anyway, who anyway, have the talent for it. Some people have it. the talent for it. Like, yeah. we all so that we don't dwell on certifications. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But the thing is, we need to let people know that these people exist. Mm. Let them know. Look, I tell you, if they know that uh, psychotherapy... Psychology mm. is a course that is studied in university, and it's not. That's why that certificate thing. I'm bringing it up. I'm not saying if you don't have yes. it's rubbish. Yes. Um, but there's a system. Let there be the respect yeah. for that profession, yeah. and then people will start to go there. There was a time the we same disrespected. Way they go to a doctor. Yeah, we used to disrespect music and even all football. That. Even yeah, football. football. Yes. Today we don't. So there's a chance that we will not continue to look at. Therapists as though as it's not something we should go to. And yeah, but the therapists have been around for a while, and yeah. it's just our mindset. We our refuse culture. our we, culture. We don't see mindset. No, but which I disagree with that one because it's, no, it's no, not, not our culture. The mindset, what but happens? We, we don't look. We look at it like it's a stigma. Typical. Yeah, typical no, 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 no. Saying. Typical of us. Mm. Everything is religion. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, seriously, <laughs> seriously. How, how do you mean? <laughs> like, uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, so every, because we believe that the pastor is unknowing. You have a mental well, issue. Well, the pastor may also be suffering wait, wait. from the same exactly. problem. Exactly, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You have a mental issue, they say, go talk to your pastor. Yeah. You have a marital issue, they say, go talk to your pastor. Absolutely. You have um, uh, uh, your children have issues, they say, why don't you seek counseling from the pastor? Or get deliverance. So get deliverance. deliverance. Or in some cases, the pastors now turn to motivational speakers. Mm. So you mm -hmm. don't see pastor as a one-stop shop for all your Problems. solutions for all your problems. So gradually, it wasn't our culture. Uh -huh. no, our I, culture I, I, was... I, I, I beg to differ a bit. No, 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 I, think, no. I think, let me just say no, this. No, let me say this. Point. You know why? No, let me say I was this. talking about the inability to come out and mm. talk to people. Mm. Yeah. And that's the basic problem. Yeah. That, that would be cultural. They go around talking to pastors. No, they don't even do that. They don't even do that. They do. I do not attend uh, But let me, let me even go do, in. Which means that we are no longer wait, ashamed of wait, talking wait, wait, about wait, wait, I handle like, a lot of divorce cases. I was going to say that as a lawyer, you them. would, yeah. I have spoken to my pastor. No, I have yeah, to agree. Pastor they said this. I'm coming. Pastors. I'm coming. Let me, let me make the hear, point. I think culturally, because and I'm generalizing now, but the way I perceive us is that we're very good at dealing with the superficial, but not very good at dealing with the internals. The deep, yeah. So you find that even when you're talking to people, they're not ready to maybe open up and admit to their inner, you know. So even when they have signs that they're on the edge, like the woman who's about to kill her husband, she, all those signs were there. People were committing suicide. The signs are there, but they don't, they can't read it, they, you know, so because we're not used to being sensitive to, maybe we're hustling too much. Maybe if, we're just used to all this if, if, if you material culture where you meet people are yeah. smiling. So we're not ready to, you know, mm. say, I'm actually, I'm, I'm on the verge of something. I'm, I'm reaching my elastic limit. Yeah. We don't know. I, I think, the, I think the, the, those the, the day Mary people have come to her husband, people have come to me. It started with, as a Catholic, it started yeah. with 
talking to, going to do confession Correct. in uh, you, the you, church. And you, then from there, you, you now become a pastor. When you break away, you feel people should come, come to you to, you. to well, discuss I mean, their problems. One problem. thing I definitely so am beginning to think, just like the way people who seek political office should go for um, an assessment. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think I now, you. if you're entering marriages, you should, you should go for a mental assessment as well. Because it's right, crazy. Right. You're letting a crazy person into your home. Do you think that that's or what an the husband and the wife should do? No, the problem is I think you don't know. I'm going to marry somebody who did show I want to I agree no, with you know, okay, okay in a way. You see, so yes. many people are, you know, snake in the grass. They know how to hide yeah. these their dodgy personality traits. Yeah. yeah. Until it comes down to Some, this. I mean, yes. from what I'd read about this case, the first wife actually left because of this woman's behavior. Sorry. The no, first, he had two yeah, wives. Yeah, had two wives. Oh, so it's wow. not like she's she married a Muslim man. Mm. She's a Muslim. So it wasn't like she wasn't to expecting to or didn't know that Muslims marry more than one wife. Then the first wife, she was even a, is she a second wife, I think. Oh, told yeah. Me. Or the third wife. Yeah. So, you know. Wow. Well, it just goes to it's, show. It's serious. But she was under pressure, so I think the it's, other it's, it's not, it's not a fidelity. coincidence yeah, that it's happening at a time yeah. when the there is um, <laughs> ri rising cases of uh, of mental yes. illness. Yes. So they all they all tied together. Mm. Yes. It is apparent that social political issues require a holistic approach, or we will end up with a dysfunctional and lopsided society. After the break, Chuka is definitely advocating for a holistic approach to what he sees as a hitherto simplistic response to a layered social problem. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It's less than inspiring when those mandated to act on our behalf seem to be making a habit of acting without thinking things through. So when in doubt, they take all down. So the forced eviction and evacuation of long-standing residents of Takwa Bay has come and gone. The Nigerian Navy affected the exercise, giving residents no notice at all. The reason for the exercise was ostensibly to rid the area of illegal oil bunkers and petroleum vandals who do not count for a majority of the occupants of the island. Ironic that there was a divisional police office that should have been consulted and equipped to ensure that vandals are constantly caught and flushed out. I feel a great sense of shame that one belongs to a nation that cannot, in 2020, selectively deal with a problem. A nation without true intelligence capability within its armed forces, and one which its ruling clique act with almost no compassion for the common man. Looking back at the constant evictions that have become a part of Lagos life, it is shocking, perhaps only to a foreigner, that we would throw people out of their living spaces. That it has happened again where water transport is the only way out is heartbreaking. The ruling clique of top politicians, top military officers, past and present, and their civilian friends live as though tomorrow will never come. They live a false life of full ostentation amongst the squalor of their fellow citizens. Where exactly does the Chief of Naval Staff, and for that matter, Mr. President, think that the displaced people are right now? The two to three-year-olds, the babies, the working men and women. Where are the illegal traders and saboteurs who they should have been truly after? If the Navy cannot man and patrol a small island, how safe is Nigeria? This matter should be investigated, but sadly, by whom? Foreigners? I mean, it's important that we start to deal with mass housing as a matter of national urgency. It is important to speak to professionals who have prepared studies for the actualization of our dream to house all. It is time to revamp the education system of not just civilian education, but military education too. 
it is time to appoint a building professional to the ministerial position at the Housing and Works. This sad incident is symptomatic of the decline of Nigeria. Evacuation of the island was not the answer. That was simply a lazy act of wickedness. Yeah, I could not put it better. That is a lazy act of wickedness. And that is, that is something that I'm beginning to... I, I, this is what's going on in Nigeria all the time. This one of banning Keke and... Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying that the reasons for doing it, mm -hmm. you know, are not Correct. valid. But you've got to provide an alternative. No, you no, can't... those reasons, Uche. They bring those reasons to validate the point. But, uh, right. Those I'm are the just, reasons that you will accept. Yes, yes. No, but I'm even but saying, let's even accept, let's even accept the reasons. reasons. Let's accept the reasons that it's due to value. insecurity, yeah. it's due to right. all of those things. But you don't displace all those people yeah, no, yeah, because of illegal of oil bombing. That's what Chuka just said, people. that you're saying insecurity. Mm. You can handle the insecurity mm -hmm. in that same place. Yes. yes. Look, take for... for when they wanted to displace those in Morocco, mm. they said that there was a crisis between both families so that yes. they don't create, um, it doesn't snowball. Mm. And then the next thing, they displace everybody. Mm. When it was Makoko, mm -hmm. it was the same reason. When it was Otodogbame, it right. was the same yeah. reason. Just recently, I was listening to a commissioner in Lagos State talking about um, Okada riding and the rest. And he said because of insecurity, mm. the accident, the blood. And then the interviewer now asked him, don't you think you should have at least, you know, provided an alternative? Yeah, prepare right. the said, roads. Oh, the dangers were just too much that you need to quickly take them out <laughs> before you exactly. begin to before provide an alternative. Yeah. So these are what people want to hear, so they quickly push down the narrative. Right. I have a different go to, the people, the people, people believe that. Mm. I'm not sure. Yeah, people, people do. That. Go to sure other clients. Go to the Netherlands. You see this this same waterways. The the government can re reassess the place and give uh, what do you call it? A layout plan of how houses should be Bill, in yes, those places. Yes, okay. And people, it's like a rich history. People would go there and even, you know, begin to understand how these people who live in this area live their life. And not because you want to take over. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, I, 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 I agree with most of what he said, but the Okada one, I'll revisit it next week. But um, my own <laughs> issue, yeah, because I don't agree with that. But, um, uh, you yeah. know, let, okay, we'll, we'll don't agree with that. But let me make the point. Yeah, let's leave it. I just referenced it for next time. No, it's You're eating your time. No, we're coming. Let's get on with the main topic. The main topic is that, yes, I was following the story, and I agree with what you guys say. You know, 4,000 people on that. Uh, Tapa Bay have been displaced. So that's a community of 4,000 anyway. Mm. And, um, and essentially what people are alleging is that's a land gra grabbing exercise. Mm. Because you didn't, it, it, and apparently the lady, the lady who was arguing the case for them on, what, recently was saying, look, essentially, these people, according to the constitution, don't even need a light, you know, do you say, a right to the land because normally people argue well, they legally there, that right. the constitution actually says if you're going to displace those people because of the, the aspect of the constitution that talks about dignity of life, Correct. you need to provide them with an alternative. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that they even have a case, this Otodo Bame, they have a case against these same people over a year now that it's the case, the, the court ruled in their favor and no compensation has come from mm. it. People have died. I even yeah. have pictures of someone who was severely injured, fleeing from Some these people. people. Died, yes. Yes. Came in. So, so the whole thing is just a, a whole, is a, it's a is whole a, mess. Is a, is a mess. You know, yeah, because yeah, they have they no did, basis they, they had what people who were res resident in the railway line. Mm. What they did, they built alternative houses and moved them to you this even place. make that before, provision, move fencing, before you execute yeah. Yeah. the, yeah. the thing is that it's even a mismatch of people the people who have even rights the people who have their homes there they've just carried yeah, people have been living there for 100 but, years you know, yes. the, 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 the problem they, they, is they, they give the reason yes. of insecurity but by displacing people by taking okada riders off the road and so on don't you realize that you're just adding yeah, to the insecurity? Okada riders are, let's, 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 don't worry, I I'm ready know, for it. But I'm just saying, displacing <laughs> but, but, people yeah, and not the moving them onto the something the else. No, yeah. Why would a graduate want to ride Okada? And I don't know That's why Okada was not hold on this. But, 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 in, but in Italy, they ride motorcycles up and down. Tapa Bisha, as you were saying. It's an unfortunate situation. And honestly, I'm hoping that with all the talk in this space, the government will read this. Of course. It. Those people need to be properly settled. They are human beings. They are legations yes. as yeah, well. Of course. Nobody Dignity cares of about life. your settlement here. Yes. Dignity never of life. They those when no this. Exactly. Yeah. All the other ones have settled, right? right? Have many. Settled. Many. Have one. <laughs> There's even an image of a guy living in a... Ca it was a cane. No, he's living because he doesn't know when next. Since they displaced him from a total bomb, he's just built a boat and he's cruising in the boat. Yeah, and apparently at least we have some 30 school children who are going to get in touch with who 
Where are they going? You What's ask the on? question, the one year old, the two years old, the yeah. three year old. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you don't even have plans for all of these ones, mm -hmm. and then you're talking about... Uh, and you even mentioned the fact that if you can't deal with the problem on this small... Then how, how, how are you going to secure there's Nigeria? A, there's, a, there's a divisional police office. Yes. The Navy yes. are there. Yeah. All the civil... Uh, and, and they can't deal with it. They can't deal with it's it. It's an indictment all, all, on all them. All this anyway. just tells me is that we but who is have in charge, a government though? that is not thinking... No, it's not just government. I think it's the house, Ministry of Housing that gave this... Who the gave government. the order? Who is need, government? Who is the government? It's the Navy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they took action based on what. And soon you now see one yeah. tourist thing spring up there, some yeah, housing, and, some and housing thing. Owned by some people. Oh, so well, disturbing. there should always be thought before action, and that surely is the language of care. We certainly care about your views, which is why we value hearing your thoughts on this feedback segment. On mental slavery and the African mindset, Rooks Omowumi simply says this should go viral. <laughs> Feel free to spread the word, Rooks. On 9-11, what's your emergency? Omar Jali Monday says, you guys are the best. Your advocate is the best. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah. <laughs> Thanks, Monday. We appreciate your feedback, and we will continue to raise the bar. On the crumbling built environment, Abiodun Martin Sardiniron says, an accurate outlook, a laudable solution, and a worthy pursuit. Given the deeply embedded, embedded status quo, is it achievable? I hesitate to hold my breath. Abiodun, we keep believing and we keep advocating. So just keep your comments coming. Uh, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. Or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. So Libro zeroes in on the practices that certainly need eliminating if we are to raise the score on our Corruption Assessment Index after the break. Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable there was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What well, well, I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. While it's difficult for people to self-audit when in government in Nigeria, after all, there are no KPIs, it's expedient oftentimes to retreat and assess genuine feedback. Corruption, our fight, their perception. Recently, a global anti-corruption watchdog Transparency International, in their latest corruption perception index of 180 countries in the world, rated Nigeria as the fourth most corrupt country in sub-Saharan Africa. This current rating has been a source of concern to government and anti-corruption agencies like EFCC and ICPC, including the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, who variously condemned the report, claiming that it was oblivious of the achievement of the Buhari administration's great stride in its resolve to tackle corruption, though the organization stood firmly behind its report. White One can understand the grounds of the EFCC over the report, as they have had to put in a lot in the fight against corruption, including various successful recovery of looted funds, prosecution and conviction of criminal cases, about 819 convictions between January and October 2019, the highest since it was established, despite their refusal to investigate some cases of high-profile politicians who are currently in APC or serving in government. One cannot say the same of their sister agencies like the ICPC and the Nigerian police. It is a notorious fact that the police are demotivated, not well remunerated, and intentionally starve of funds for reasons bent to, to government, despite insisting on fighting corruption. One cannot say the same of the ICPC, who, in spite of huge budgetary allocation and a chairman who is a professor of law, has been consistently emerged in one controversy or the other. Either disobedience of existing court orders, like the DSS, 
to intentionally misleading the court or ambushing respondents in matter they have taken to court. The latest being the Pinnacle Communication Saga. To the extent that some people have even called for its merger with the FCC. I think so too, because it's simply a duplication of the job of the police and the FCC. Also, despite the fact that the job could have been handled by the police if well remunerated and properly structured, the creation of another presidential panel on recovery of government assets, whose former chairman, though now a fugitive, recently accused the chairman of ICPC of being behind his travel for fear that he will, use, he will be used to replace the ICPC chair, is a discussion for another day, all over offices. But the Nigerian government and the Attorney General of the Federation should take cognizance of the fact that Transparency International, as its name implies, does not look at the cases prosecuted in court in rating countries on passive index for corruption and corrupt tendencies. As according to them, these only show how effective prosecutor, the courts and the media are in investigating and exposing corruption. After all, if you are effective, why wait for people to steal, then run after them? Why not make it impossible for them to steal? They would rather look at the perception of Nigerians about the Nigerian Immigration Services, the Custom, the National Assembly, judiciary, ease of doing business without having to grease spam, or to settle to get contracts by passing of our procurement laws and procedures in awarding contracts, getting employment, gaining admission, executive disregard for the extant laws of the land, especially the Freedom of Information Act and disobedience to court order. With all of these indicators, even the government will agree with me that we have not even started the fight against corruption. So if we must improve in our perception rating, we must stop fighting corrupt individuals only and concentrate on cor fighting corruption by putting in place robust institutions that would prevent people from dipping their hands in what my Egbon, Jimmy Disu, would call the cookie jar. Government should know that nepotism and favoritism are the high variant of corruption. Somebody should remind government that in the eyes of these rating agencies, election rigging, vote buying, refusal to render party election account publicly, indiscriminate abuse of public office are the biggest form of corruption. No nation leaves its police the way we have left us and expect to be taken seriously or rated high in the fight against corruption. Because a compromise case of minor stealing today at the police station is a potential opportunity to embezzle and mismanage and abuse government for tomorrow. Therefore, I would advocate that every public official must submit themselves for public scrutiny and accountability and not the secret one currently be conducted by CCB and DSS. This is to ascertain every source of their wealth and publicly declare them and make it easily accessible through freedom of information request. Also, as custodian of public institutions, they must use same facilities with the rest of us, like hospitals, schools, travel by road, reduce the number of security personnel guiding them, no sirens. That way, they will feel the pain the masses have to contend with daily. And if we all feel the pain, they'll put the right people in there to fix it and appropriate the actual sum Meant so fixing it instead of stealing same. Told them, brother. Wow. So, uh, I'll 21 say, years yeah. after Abacha's death, mm. we're still recovering the loot. I'm trying to point at one part of this what you said that we must take that anti corruption war into the preventive mode. Yes. Rather so. than waiting for them to take the money first and tell you start running after mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. 21 mm -hmm. years, yeah. another 300 million dollars is being repatriated mm, again. Mm. It's a loss. And it may not be all. That's there may still be more. That's yeah. small money. No, I mean, I, I, I'm very, oh, I'm very, people. but you know, when I, when I read his thing, I, I, started, I started saying to myself, okay, Denmark, that's at top of the, for the fifth year running, they're the least corrupt country in the world. What are they doing right? And then when I went to look, they, they, it's not rocket science. They're dealing with free, um, freedom of the press. So they're high in freedom of the press. They're high in freedom of information. Their judicial system is very independent. And then well, I'm trying to think of the other thing that they do that, but the things that they list there are not supremely, you know, any intelligent person. But the other thing is that they also employ um, technology in making sure you I take the middleman. So they use uh, chain block technology when they're doing like mm. distributions to the IDP camps. So you don't take out the middleman. Mm. Because I know in other countries, like if you break, uh, if you break the speed limit or whatever, the light captures you, you have a, you don't, so you don't have anybody to you beg and bribe. You. And they're very tough on bribery, you know. So, but we don't have the data, that's where we need to start. So we can take out the middleman, electronic voting. So you're dealing with things that are systemic. And before you know it, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are governor or president, you fall in there, the system will capture you. Corruption you know? is not stealing money. Corruption is the entire, com is the entire system. Mm. That's what, and Libros has already answered that even within his, uh, yeah. his yeah. whatever. Um, and that's where our problem is. 
And then add to that the fact that even if you're going after only money stolen by people, why are you going after people of parties different from yours? The truth is we had how many years of PDP? And so right now, we can of PDP. government, and all they're doing is catching those from PDP. So it appears that for us to catch those from APC, we need a new PDP government. <laughs> Can you imagine? And, and, and that's why you're saying we are running after them after they've stolen. Yes. Right now, APC is stealing. Yes, quote, it's their quote. day. So it's their day. So we need another government after 20 To now chase the ones that we'll run? It's crazy. It's like cat and mouse. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And then so, it's, it's foolish of them to even say dismiss, because I even read how e e EFCC just mm. dismissed. You think other countries, and I think I, it was you, Bolan, who I heard saying that other countries, when they're trying to assess people for whether they're you know, worthy to do trade with, that they're not going to be looking at what you say, how many no. cases you try in court. No, no, they're no. looking at you know, the things that matter to them, you know, whether you're going to be transparent, you're going to show integrity. Right. You know? So these are the bottom lines. So whether you dismiss it or not, it will still It doesn't matter. Yeah. It will still hold. <laughs> and it will be effect. reckoned with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After all, like Mohammed apparently was well, seeing um, Reuters. <laughs> What's he doing? Uh, unfortunately, time... Um, run fast when you're having fun. Here on The Advocate, we are all about transparency and exposing the truth in all our best interests. After the break, Uche likens human trafficking to modern day slavery. Absolutely agree. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Slavery is defined as a condition of having to work very hard without proper reward or appreciation. Human trafficking, the modern day slavery. Last week, I spoke about mental slavery, but this week, I want to highlight another form of slavery, human trafficking, specifically in Nigeria. For the benefit of those who don't know, it is the illegal trade of people for exploitation or commercial gain. Today, it is a $150 billion global industry. Two thirds of the total revenue are generated from commercial sexual exploitation, while the rest is from forced economic exploitation, such as domestic work, agriculture, and other economic activities. And as they say, Niger Nugu carry last. Nigeria has been identified as a source, transit, and destination for human trafficking. According to the latest Global Slavery Index uh, report of 2018, Nigeria ranks 32nd out of 167 of the countries with the highest number of slaves. 75% are trafficked across the state, while 23% are within states. 2% are trafficked outside the country. The National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, in their 2019 report, found the average age of trafficked children to be 15. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, has found that 94% of all Nigerian women trafficked to Europe from, for prostitution hail from Edo, Edo State, that is, with Italy as the number one final destination. A December 2018 UN report notes that the vast majority of Nigerian migrants witness or experience unlawful killings, gang rape, prostitution, arbitrary detention, torture and inhumane treatment, on-page wages, slavery, racism and xenophobia. A UNESCO 2006 report ranked human trafficking as the third most common crime in Nigeria after drug trafficking and economic fraud. Human trafficking is undoubtedly big business and low risk as players are generally allowed to operate with impunity. 
Though the current governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, has launched the Edo State Task Force Against Human Trafficking, with Delta State following suit, human trafficking is still on the rise. This is because poverty remains the number one factor rendering women and girls vulnerable to sex trafficking. Other factors such as parental pressure, eroded mindsets through values, cultural acceptance of prostitution, limited education and economic opportunities are certainly contributing factors. Nigeria being the poverty capital of the world, it is not difficult to see why we are ranked so high. I therefore propose that the following measures are required to curb this evil practice. Government engagement, empowered communities, and access or opportunity to live a life that is dignified. Cognitive stroke behavior restructuring and economic development focused on poverty reduction and wealth creation should be included in this approach, especially for the survivors. Yeah, you, yeah I always say this jokingly. If you know the amount budgeted for sex annually in Nigeria, triples our national budget. Mm. Um, as we are talking here now, money is exchanging hands somewhere mm. over sex. And so, um, you agree with you, cultural value, pressure, and then most importantly, you find out that these days our, we have this completely, you know, forgot about morals in our society. It's about the money. Mm -hmm. Once you get the money, you are worshipped, you are celebrated. Nobody cares how you made it. That's mm. why people who ordinarily those days would be outcasts in our communities are the ones collecting chief testy title mm -hmm, today. Mm -hmm. And so everybody would want to make money irrespective of how you make, how it. You make it. I had a friend then who told me he would rather be a prisoner in London than be a free man in Nigeria. It's that wow. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with what Libras is saying. You know, I think sometimes when we look at poverty, we, we just look at poverty. But I'm glad you, you broke it down because one of the things I read about when you, to do with uh, human trafficking is that the traffickers are the real cause of human trafficking. So people who are ready to exploit other people, yeah, they're poor. But it takes somebody without conscience to want to exploit their poverty mm -hmm. for them to put them in a position where a lot of them are promised regular jobs. When they right. get there, they seize their yeah. passports and then they make them work as mm -hmm. sex slaves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's not as simple as just poverty. It's, it's about people who don't have, uh, do you say, a conscience that yeah. are ready to say, look, I'll, I'll. And then I like the fact that you pointed out that a lot of the um, human trafficking is internal. Mm. So we're maybe overlooking things like the young children people take to That's their homes. It. They don't give them an education. They're just mm. slaves in and your house. And they treat them badly. Yeah, and they don't feel any responsibility to invest in this human being. You know, yes, it's one thing to say, I'll train you, I'll take your child off you. You know, maybe you have too many children and you're too poor to train them. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to have them in your home, practically working hours mm -hmm. and treating them like a, a slave. And you don't even look at this child and say, I want to make an investment so that when you leave my house, you can even get married from my house. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the kind of conscience we don't seem to mm -hmm. have. You know, mm -hmm. we don't seem to see that this child is your child the minute you take them under your roof. Yeah. So these are the kind ward, of things yeah. that we need to sensitize yeah. ourselves towards. You know, I, I've spoken with, um, with uh, a house help before. And uh, I just asked, what's, what's her name? She mentioned something. How said, old? About I, how old? And I asked about, about 15. Okay. And I said, for real, where are you from? She said, but I agree. I said, so is that really your name? Then she laughed. And then she mentioned her name. Mm -hmm. So even the name she's called by, it's, it's not, not even her name. Mm. Just dehumanized somehow. So you yes. can imagine the, the, the indignity. Yeah that you even take the name away from that 15-year-old. Mm. She has never stepped in a school wow. at age 15. Yeah, some of them, they, that, that's what happens. And that some, is within. Some, their parents know, okay, go and work with this person. Their parents is collecting like, salaries yeah. for yeah, the job that they are doing. Parents are pimping. I, it has happened to me. So it has happened yeah. to me. The lady said that we should be sending the lady the guest salary to her. And I said, no, I won't do that. Somebody cannot be working for me, and then you are the one. Mm, she said, you the want one. to save it for her. So I said, no, we open an account for her, let it be saved there. <laughs> In the case of Benin that you mentioned, mm -hmm. let's not be deceived that some of them don't know where they are going. I've had, <laughs> exactly. cause, I've had cause to ask mm. a cousin, a distance cousin called me. I was like, ah, she wants if I have link to go to abroad. I said, they will use you for prostitution. I say, is it not better than the one I'm doing mm. here? Oh, so, so she's prostituting here. A yes. lot of them already know. This is a graduate who, uh -huh. some of them know that when they get there, some of them, they even go to swear oaths. They say, you know, I, you were not forced into this. So that these uh, traffickers know in the event of any problem, they say, look at it. 
she said she knew what she was going to do. There's even one I'm working on now. Wow. But I mean, maybe with time, I'll talk about it. Even in the case of Edu, I mean, Chuka didn't say anything. I don't know if you... No, I was just, yeah, I was just going to say that uh, basically there's prostitution already here. And what you're dealing with are people who just want to prostitute abroad. Wow. So it's not, it's not a case. Yes, their eyes it's, are it's open. more lucrative there. But I'll just so they know what they're going for. It's I was going to say, not, when you say Edo states, because sometimes people yeah. don't want to mention Edo states, I don't think it's necessarily yeah, that now, there's something wrong with Edo states. I think it's just the fact that when people do things, they do things in rings. So you have, you know, fraud stars. You know, you you take a lot, a lot of them okay. embrace, you know, this, uh, this thing. Uh. Right, I know this can go on and on and on. Right, well, some practices should be subject to a zero-tolerance policy. We advocate to narrow down and eliminate the room for operation. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www www.plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, when we'll be reporting for duty to raise those issues that matter to all of us, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Bye bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.